Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to our Sunday morning service on uh, May 31st. I hope that you've all been enjoying this first wave of warm weather. Uh, it's been really nice here in, uh, in the city this past week. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and to acknowledge this theme, we have a change in color, the color red, representing the coming of the Spirit. And so that is our theme for today. So I hope that we can all prepare our hearts as we enter into this time of worship on this Pentecost Sunday. And just as a short announcement for next Sunday, we will be celebrating communion once again. So uh, you're invited to prepare your piece of bread and juice or wine as we share in the communion together for next Sunday. And now let's come before God as we join together in the call to worship. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. And inspire our thoughts and actions. Stir in our hearts, Holy Spirit. And fill us with energy to spread joy in the world. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. And move us to bring hope to those in despair. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit. As we worship and witness to God's coming reign. Amen. And else join our hearts as we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, compassionate Son, healing Spirit, with tender kindness you transform our lives with your presence. You turn weeping into laughter, sorrow into joy, and death into life. We come in adoration this day and pause to worship you. We rest from our work and responsibilities. We set aside our distractions and other activities to praise you for your goodness and hope. Holy One, source of our lives, we confess that we have not always listened for your Spirit's call. You call us to love our enemies, but we cling to animosity, old and new. You call us to unity in the body of Christ, but we remain divided. You send us in love into the world to be witnesses, but we avoid opportunities to share our joy in Christ. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. We lay open the prayers of our hearts and offer them up to you at this time. Thank you for hearing us and receiving our true selves as we seek you even imperfectly. With genuine thanks, we praise and glorify you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. not 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, God's generous love reaches out to embrace us. In Christ, we are forgiven and set free to begin again in the renewing power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God for this most generous gift. And I'd like to just uh, give a word of thanks to Jeffrey and Carol uh, for leading us in the Lord's Prayer. And now let's bring our hearts together as God's community as we share Christ's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Now let's join together in our first hymn, and this is number 581, Pour Out Your Spirit from on High. And so we turn now to our responsive psalm as we will join in this together. And this is Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you made to play in the sea. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide their face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, 
who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and 12 to 21. Let's hear the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us give God thanks and praise for the reading of the Holy Word. The famous American preacher and professor, Fred Craddock, tells a story of a strange incident one day when he was a guest lecturer at a seminary. And just as he was about to begin his lecture, he was interrupted by one of the students who stood up and said boldly, before you speak, professor, I need to know if you are Pentecostal. And the room grew silent and awkward, and Craddock was taken aback. He was caught off guard. He looked around for the dean of the seminary to come in and rescue him, but he was nowhere to be found. The student continued questioning him in front of everybody. And feeling kind of knocked off guard, Craddock said, do you mean, do I belong to the Pentecostal church? The student said, no, I, I mean, are you Pentecostal? And Craddock said, are you asking if I am charismatic? And the student said, no, I'm asking if you are Pentecostal. And Craddock said, do you want to know if I speak in tongues? And the student said, no, I, I want to know if you're Pentecostal. And kind of exasperated, Craddock finally said, I don't know what your question is. And the student said, obviously, you are not Pentecostal. And then he walked out. It wasn't until later when Craddock had a chance to reflect on this incident that he understood what the student was asking. This was kind of an unsatisfying and non-climactic end to the story, but it raises a very important question of faith. 
What is Acts 2 telling us this morning as God's people? Are you a Pentecostal or are you Pentecostal? Acts is saying that we are all Pentecostal as adjectives. If the church is alive in the world and governed by the Spirit, then by definition, the church is Pentecostal, and we are Pentecostal Christians. That might come as a surprise. You thought you were Presbyterian. So what is a Pentecostal Christian? It's someone who has committed to follow Christ's commandment of love and who lives and serves filled with God's gift of the Spirit. What is Pentecost? Well, Pentecost marks the promise of the Holy Spirit come 50 days following Jesus' resurrection. It was on this day in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit was poured out on 120 followers of Christ who were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem. It was this day that marks the inauguration or the birth of the church. And it represents the special work upon us, the church, in the ongoing salvation work of God. Now, I have, a, I have a very unique relationship with the Pentecostal denomination. My family in Canada, my family started out in the United Church of Canada growing up as a kid. But then I, by myself, took sort of a detour through the Pentecostal church. And it's there where I fully accepted my faith my life of faith as my own. And this happened when I was a teenager. And it was a year later, and that's also where I received my call to ministry. And so I have a very uh, warm spot uh, for my Pentecostal background and experience. And then after that, that took me down to the American South in the mid-1980s. And that's where I experienced the center stage, the center stage of Pentecostalism and the charismatic movement like very few people ever will, I can assure you. My own spiritual journey has been quite uh, winding and twisting. And it's been a very, very rich and diverse uh, experience for me. And now here I am in the Presbyterian Church in Canada. That's a whole other series of sermons how I got here. Often on this day of Pentecost, often the sermons of the Pentecost are about power, strength, fire, authority, boldness, firmness, being fearless in our faith. And this is all brought about, enabled by the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God. And so these Pentecost sermons are usually about power, power, and more power. The focus is on God giving us that power to become more confident in the act of sharing and declaring our faith and being bestowed with gifts and skills to share that message of the power of God. Historically and theologically, all of that is accurate, and it's true. But today, today I want to highlight an aspect that usually gets lost in all the power-centered messages. And that message is solidarity, community. Very, very central uh, themes in 
our understanding of faith and our understanding of Pentecost. Solidarity, community, unity. Now that doesn't sound as exciting as power and fire. And yet it's such a vital part of the life of faith and the experience of God's presence. A young man was apprenticing to a master artist who produced the most beautiful stained glass windows to be found anywhere. And the young apprentice could not even come close to the master's artistic genius. And so he thought, well, maybe if I borrowed his tools, maybe that will give me uh, better skill. And he tried that for several weeks, using the master's tools, imitating the master's skill, but he just couldn't produce his work at the same level. The young man finally said to his teacher, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing any better with your tools than I did with mine. And the teacher replied, so it's not the tools of the master you need. It's the spirit of the master that you need. John chapter 20 tells us that Jesus appeared to his disciples. He showed them his resurrection body with wounded hands and sighed. And he gave them a, a special advance breathing upon of the Holy Spirit. That's in John 20. And in verse, eight, uh, verse 19, it says that when he did this, they were all together. They were all together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. This sounds kind of familiar, similar to Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost when the followers of Jesus, now 120 of them, were all together in one place. This was the precondition, so to speak, of the arrival of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is manifest when there is unity and community among God's beloved. That is a direct expression of God's character. When there's real, genuine community, a coming together of hearts and minds of God's people, the Spirit is given to empower and guide us. This kind of authentic gathering reveals the very breath and character of God. It's only then that we can experience a new confidence and boldness and conviction and faith to serve in the name of Jesus. Healthy community breeds trust. Trust breeds confidence and vulnerability. You know the people who you utterly trust are the ones that you're vulnerable with. And likewise, you're vulnerable with them because you trust them. You don't open yourselves up to those you don't trust. And so it's so much easier to love when there's trust, isn't it? Jesus' followers were all together. They were unified in body, mind, and spirit. And then the spirit came. Tertullian, 
Tertullian was a scholar in the second century who converted to Christianity. And people asked him how his conversion uh, went, the reasons for his conversion. He said that the one thing, the one thing that converted him to Christianity was not the philosophical arguments people gave him, because with any philosophical point, he always had a counterpoint to defeat that initial point. So it wasn't that. He said that it was because Christians had something that he didn't have. He said that the thing that converted him was that he saw the way Christians loved each other. That was a profound realization for him. That was a spiritual realization. We need to experience the unity of the Spirit as the early church did. We need to be striving to live in genuine love for each other. Pentecost proclaims to us that the Christian life is not just about salvation, it's also about transformation. One preacher said it this way, when God sends forth the Spirit, amazing things can happen. Barriers are broken, communities are formed, opposites are reconciled, unity is established, disease is cured, addiction is broken, cities are renewed, races are reconciled, hope is established, people are blessed, and church happens. Today, the Spirit of God is present, and we're going to have church. And so he says, so be ready. Get ready. God is up to something. Discouraged folks, cheer up. Dishonest folks, fess up. Sour folks, sweeten up. Closed folk, open up. Gossipers, shut up. Conflicted folks, make up. Sleeping folks, wake up. Lukewarm folk, fire up. Dry bones, shake up. Sleeping folks, wake up. I already said that. Dry bones, shake up. And pew potatoes, stand up. But most of all, Christ the Savior of the world is lifted up. This is the power of the Spirit. This is the experience of the Holy Spirit that God wants us to taste. This is what we celebrate this day, on the day of Pentecost. God's promise come to life in love and community and reconciliation. Praise be to Almighty God. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Breathe new life into us. Help us to share this new life in what we do and say. As you inspire us, help us to inspire others. Help us to build up rather than break down. Help us to be renewed and refreshed when we are torn down and tired. Call us by your Spirit into the way of new life through the gift of the risen and beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now let's gather our spirits as we sing hymn number 764, There's a Spirit in the Air. Let's join in prayer together. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give thanks for all the manifestation of your love and mercy to us. Unite us by the power of your spirit, and as we live our lives, empower us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to those who might not otherwise know or have experienced the love of God. Revive us with a new Pentecost and break the walls that separate us. Give us the conviction that we are indeed your church, the body of Christ, and that ours is one faith, one church, one baptism, one spirit. Eternal God, our hearts are open to receive your spirit to cleanse us, guide us, and refresh us. Foster in us a childlike faith, a humble attitude that trusts in your provisions freely and embraces your gifts fully. We're thankful to have a community of sisters and brothers to share this faith walk together as we go hand in hand and heart with heart. As we reach out to a hurting world, we pray for one another as we are joined with Christ we also extend our hand in healing comfort, and blessing those who seek your hand now we pray for Rob Gillingham 
We pray for the Graff family, Bart, Victoria, Elizabeth, and Jasper. We lift up Helen and Kathleen Grant. Pray for Zora Habib and Pete and Diane Hamill. Hear their prayers, O God. For all who seek your hand of healing, for unspoken prayers, receive them all, loving God. Bring healing to your people with your compassion, power, and presence. Rejuvenate and refresh us in your love as the faithful followers of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now in this time of offering, let us give of our hearts. Let us give of ourselves as we open up to God and come together with all the gifts that, that we have and to do so uh, in joy. And so there is a donation button on the front page of our church website, uh, stmarkstoronto.org. And I, I invite you to make a donation um, the summer months are coming, and so we encourage your ongoing uh, generosity to St. Mark's Church, and we, we really appreciate uh, all of your support. So let's come together with our gifts and offerings to God this day. Pentecost celebrates the gifts of the Spirit poured out on the church, preparing Christ's followers to serve Him in the world. So let us offer our gifts to God this day to build up the church, its ministry and mission, wherever the Spirit leads. Let us give. Let's join together in prayer now. Spirit of grace and power, bless the gifts we bring today so that they accomplish your good and loving purpose in Jesus' name. We offer ourselves too, so that our lives may proclaim the good news with your grace and power. Amen. And now let's join together uh, in the singing of our final hymn. Uh, for those who are following your hymn books, it's 371, 371, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
And now let's join together in our benediction. Go out into the world trusting this reality. You matter to God. Go out into the world as people who practice celebration. Go out into the world with eyes to see those who need a hand, who need to be lifted up and hear the good news. They matter to God. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ, our living Savior. Amen. Well, I'm uh, happy that we've been able to come together once again for our Sunday worship, our St. Mark's uh, worship service. Uh, Just as a a final note, uh, you probably have heard on the news about the announcements for uh, gradual reopening. As far as the churches are concerned, uh, that's not, still it's not happening um, any time that that we can uh, see not in the foreseeable future, uh, it seems. Uh, As you all know, this is a very uh, fluid and changing uh, situation. Uh, And so we don't always know if it's gonna be two weeks, four weeks, or or next month, and so on. But right now, it doesn't seem like churches uh, have a green light to open. Even if the churches are allowed to to open in in a limited, gradual sense, that's still a question for all churches to consider whether or not they will open. And so session, our session here at St. Mark's is considering those uh, questions. Um, and so as time goes on, as more information becomes available, uh, we will be keeping everyone updated uh, on that. But for now, it looks like throughout the summer, uh, the deadline for reopening uh, has been pushed technically uh, the state of emergency is still in place, uh, and so there's, there's no foreseeable date uh, at this point. And so uh, it looks like we'll be having to go uh, on uh, on this basis for the foreseeable future. And so just as a reminder, let's continue to pray for one another, to keep in touch with one another, and I know so much of that is already happening, and it's, it's great to hear. Um, so we just need to hang in there together and uh, keep our focus, maintain our sense of spiritual community as God's people and as the congregation uh, of St. Mark's. And so many blessings to you. And again, a reminder for next Sunday is our Communion Sunday. And so uh, if you would like, you can um, remember to bring your bread and juice or wine as we celebrate communion together. God bless you all, friends.